I hit go live and it's going live and we're live. <laughs> wow, that was quick. Hi, yeah. I'm Amy. Um, this is the Stuck in It Zombies. I have forgotten how to introduce us. You just like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Hi, and welcome also, to the Stuck in um, It <laughs> Go ahead, go ahead. Hi, Sorry. welcome to the Stockin' It Zombies. I'm Amy, also known as Jay Nitma. And I'm Megan, also known as Just Run It. And this is episode 361, where apparently we can't remember. I was like, I, th- my brain was, I couldn't, I couldn't even be Amy there for a second. I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll be Amy. And you can be, <laughs> like, I don't know what she says. I just, said, <laughs> I just <laughs> oh. And it really was the end we're live. And I just like my brain just short (laughs) circuit. What am I doing? So Claire, Nikki, Laura, Sandy, Janice, Shayna, and Cheryl, uh, and Sandy, all I think I already said Sandy, um, all got to laugh at us um, being (laughs) crazy people. (laughs) Goofy, goofy people. Yeah. Well, we coordinated colors. Um, yeah. today somehow just randomly <laughs> showed up on zoom wearing the same color <laughs> I decided today that I have a closet full of fancy clothes and I was um I'm doing interviews I've got several hours worth of interviews today so I'm like I'm gonna put on a fancy shirt and not just throw my blazer over the top of my um normal normal plain uh t-shirt so it was funny. The first one I pulled out had a I voted sticker on it. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's been a while since I've worn this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Since I voted. <laughs> um, and, and it would have been in person. So it would have been like 2019. Oh, wow. Um, because, yeah, I didn't get a I voted sticker when I did the mail in, right? There's that. Anyway. There's that. <laughs> How um, are you today? Good. Yep. Uh, it's been, uh, I don't know, the morning has flown by uh, mm-hmm. and I am, I don't know, I'm excited to talk about yarn over because uh, mm-hmm. I've been doing stuff for that. And uh, yeah. So if you want, if you want your brain to like explode out of your head and then need to put it back in, not just because I'm like, and we're live. Um, Dexter is turning 13 tomorrow. If that doesn't oh. break your brain. <laughs> like what? No, how many be 13? <laughs> but Dexter's turning 13 tomorrow. Yeah. It's... Two teenagers in the house. God help right. me. <laughs> No, when I think about how many years my kids have left in the house is when my brain explodes, right? Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. like I only a little, two and a little bit over two years in, you know, school and they're, my oldest is done. And then the younger two years after that. So yeah, I only have like well, four years left. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, so my coworkers are all about this because we're unlike you being on site, right? Like we're all remote, right? So they're all like this weather, right? It's horrible. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going to go to Arizona and work, you know, from anywhere in Arizona or Florida or whatever. And I'm like, I have uh, seven years left with Quinton at home. So I'm not working from anywhere for at least <laughs> seven more years. They have they have schools in Arizona. And I'm like, yeah, because that makes a lot of sense. When it's nice outside in Minnesota, we you go to school here in Minnesota. And then when it's horrible outside, then we go to Arizona. <laughs> I don't think that's how that works. But yeah. might want to do school activities. Yeah. Anyway, all of that to say, I'm hoping that the work from anywhere is still an option by the time we get to the point where we can just pack up and go somewhere warmer because it's an unusually cool April. But. Right, right. Yeah, it is really cold out today. I am wearing one step up from what, you know, like I, I leveled up my coat this week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I was trying to level them down and then I had to level them down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Christy Socknubbin posted in Discord, which it, uh, every year uh, you see it as the memes, um, the miscongeniality, what's your favorite date or what's your ideal date? And um, it's April 25th. Yes, because it's not too cold. And then it's like, oh, it's really cold today. 
<laughs> Actually, it was like like high of 30 here today. You're not wearing just a nice light jacket um, yeah. today. But yeah, always got to laugh about that. Sometimes we have nice end of April, right? Yeah. In Discord, I started to do the, the picture countdown with the Giphy. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how many times that's going to work, but it worked twice already. So <laughs> like... <laughs> Just type in the number and see a, a Giphy that works. Uh, that might not happen. Or they might all start being football players because <laughs> that seems to be the consistency. Doing dances, doing dances, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Laura in Minnesota says that she put botanically dyed yarn outside yesterday and it broke. Oh, no. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> I do believe that. Yeah. Ah, so um, yeah. I was just going to say that I got our banner and I posted that on Instagram. So yeah. I will have that at yarn over. Uh, yeah. That is this Saturday. It's not often that you and I get to order things and have them come and like show them to people, right? Because often it's like VK swag where we have to wait. Um, but yeah, to have that immediate like buy it, ship it, get it, show it, use it. Woo! That's got to be fun. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it wasn't even ship it. I got a local printer. So like I got to pick it up and like, I don't know, it was so quick. I was yeah. happy for that. Yeah, absolutely. You got to level up with that background with the printed green background, which was fun. Yep. Um, yep. But yeah, we are both super excited. Like it has been the wind in my sails for the last couple of weeks as I've been thinking about it going up to um, Minneapolis for yarn over. Yeah, you get to teach and mm -hmm. I will just sit there and knit all day trying to finish my my objects because <laughs> I have two more uh, frenemies to finish. <laughs> mm. Well, my, my two topics are two things that are near and dear to my heart and obviously something I'm super passionate about. So I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm teaching a class about the love of socks, which if you know me, you know I love socks and I could probably talk all day about it. It's <laughs> It's only the first half of the day um, and get to deep dive into that and super excited. And then the second half is Tunisian crochet, which is just, I'm, uh, yeah, I've been getting some um, items on the needles just or on the hook so that um, to refresh myself because it'd been a few uh, months since I'd done anything with Tunisian crochet. And again, the passion has just come like flooding back oh, this is so exciting. People are going to be so happy to learn all about this. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. If you're in the Twin Cities area, they have kind of opened up the market. It's going to be um, like you have to pre-register for sure um, to get a for sure spot, but then they're going to let people in, I think, um, kind of prior to that. So they're trying to do a little of, of or after that, they're trying to do a little crowd control. So Okay. It's from what I, I just know when I need to show up. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, really they're trying to make sure that it's not, you know, crazy bonkers there. So I think that you just sign up for like a free entrance, right? It's just kind of pre-registering to go to mm -hmm. the market. Um, and then the classes have already been, um, that registration has passed, but, yeah. um, yeah, go visit Amy in the market and, um, she'll have some goodies there. And, uh, I'll be around in, in the in-betweens of the, um, of my classes. So. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I think I'm in the same room as Jeanette. So mm -hmm. Sun Valley Fibers. So I'll get to wave across the room at her, uh, all day. And George. <laughs> yeah. And George. <laughs> so that'll be fun. And uh -huh. yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, I don't know. It's my first one. I will be there talking about uh, our retreat marketplace and also uh, trying to get people excited about um, ZKN and all the awesome things that we have going on there. Yeah. And I feel like um, like knit stars. It's like, hey, we got all these knit stars in here. You yeah. know, like uh, I think season seven has Anne and, um, <clears throat> and Zandy and yeah, so yeah. We, we know those knit stars. <laughs> we do, we do indeed. And they're in our backlog of content if you're, if people are interested. But um, yeah, no, 
I agree. It's uh, when I went back and looked kind of, you know, we've been doing ZKN. Uh, it'll be two years here in August, July. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we've, we've got some great folks, you know, um, established folks that have come and, and spoken with us and then folks that have been rising stars, you know, ever, ever since. So um, kind of uh, we knew them when, right? <laughs> Yep. We had uh, we had Sarah and her gnomes on before there was the year of the gnome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, no, it's yeah. been really exciting. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, super excited about that. Super excited. I'm taking the taking Friday off. Might try mm -hmm. to hit some um, some LYSs on the way up since I haven't been to an LYS in quite some time. Not since Northfield when I was visiting uh, or was looking at the um, Janice's Queen City Yarns. Spread, um, mm -hmm. and then I didn't buy anything while I was there. Um, so, yeah, super excited to to have a little bit of time away from work. Well, I didn't I didn't just say that aloud, did I? <laughs> I think I think we can all uh, appreciate that some time away. Yeah. Um, well, and again, but... you know, world's smallest violin or whatever. I did just get back from Costa Rica, but I feel like I don't feel like I know I've been working like sixty hour weeks since I got back from Costa Rica. So kind of crazy, kind of crazy. Yeah. But yeah, this week, tips and tricks. Um, I will definitely, oh, uh, speaking of ZKN and you knew them when, um, have gotten the, the May 14th, I think I pre-announced uh, the Knit Strips folks um, last week, but I'll hold their book up again. Um, I'm deep diving into it and learning more about the interactive knitting, which has been super awesome. Uh, really love the format of the book and kind of some of the thought process behind interactive knitting. In fact, I think uh, that kind of dovetails into some of my tips and tricks, which is kind of making the knitting work for you rather than you having to be very rigid in the knitting, right? So one of the more powerful statements in the book is about gauge and how normal gauge, normal pattern gauge, um, your fabric has to follow the, the gauge but an interactive knitting gauge follows the fabric. Mm -hmm. Think about that one. Okay. So again, some issues are not issues, but definitely difference in how you write the pattern, right? If you're not writing it to a specific gauge, you have to kind of walk people through, um, you know, you have to get to a point where it fits this or it measures mm -hmm. this on your body, right? Um, which is really interesting, but super excited to talk to um to Karen and Alice about it um, on May 14th. So um, yeah, stay tuned. Yeah. Exciting. Exciting conclusion too. <laughs> <laughs> and just to be forewarned, I am going to make all of the comic book um, mom jokes while oh. we're interviewing. Okay. <laughs> I'll be like, what is your origin story? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Who is the villain, the classic villain in this story? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair warning. <laughs> so my tip, my tip this week isn't, um, I don't know, it's not rocket science. I don't know. It's just a very basic thing. Um, I had three balls of this lovely uh, linen silk um, from Queen City Yarns and um, it's DK. So I, I can't quite remember what the yardage was on it, but you know, not uh, an abundance of yardage but also, you know, the pattern calls for three balls of yarn. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I had knitted most of the back and needed to pick into that second ball to get to the bottom here for this lovely hem. Uh, it's a double knit hem. I love how this looks. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got a lot of lovely drape. But I was a little concerned with how much yarn I would have. So what I've done is I've started the front with the fresh ball of yarn. Uh, and then, so I have the partials from before and the fresh ball of yarn. It is a high low. So lucky for me, there'll be less knitting on the front. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm just making sure that I get enough um, length uh, from this first uh, ball or what I want to say the third ball basically uh, in order to make sure I have enough for the rest of uh, the sweater 
I think that that division helps me re recognize where I'm at in, in the amount of yardage, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I knit most of the way through with that first ball of yarn, which included the those shoulder, saddle shoulders. So it had a little extra um, than the front would. And so I figure if I start with that fresh ball of yarn and I know how far I can get through with that, that first ball, like I might make it all the way through the front with just this ball. And mm -hmm. then I have more than enough um, for everything else. What is the everything else? I guess I'm trying to figure out where the extra, where your la that middle ball will um, be leveraged. There's going to be some edging for the sleeve and mm -hmm. the neck. Okay. And, and there's a significant amount left, right? I, I'm not hurting for yarn, but I'm worried about how much length I'm going to be able to get um, before I'm going to have to start worrying about this. So I have this ball that is free of attachment, right? It's not attached to anything. And mm -hmm. if, I put, if I'm running really low on this and I feel like I have a lot of knitting left to do, I can pick up and do that other work with this ball. I, again, I'm not, I feel like I'm not making sense because this would have run out a lot sooner. And then all I would have is this ball. Mm -hmm. And so that I couldn't, I'd have to cut if I wanted to stop and do the, the rest of it. But now I just, I have this substantial ball that I can do the rest of it with. And then I will know exactly how much I have left to keep knitting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Again, I feel like I could have done a better job explaining that, but. Um, you're using, yeah, you're using it to gauge um, where, you, where you're going to have um, possibly extra. And then also you can kind of work in parallel if you need to, um, because the front, you're rapidly running out of the front. Right, yeah, and again, um, if I had started my front using that partial ball, You'd have a, yeah. I'd have a situation where I wouldn't necessarily be able to work mm -hmm. twice, you know, works two at the same time. Yep. yep. Like to pick up the collar or whatever. But anyway. It's beautiful. Yes. Loving the drape, loving the fabric. It, um, it is really, really pretty. I'm hoping to power through and get this done. Um, gosh, what day is it? I got two days. <laughs> until I need to give feedback. So I'm hoping to actually power through and get to where I can provide feedback on all of the parts of mm -hmm. the sweater. Yeah. So if that means I've gotten one sleeve <laughs> and, and a collar and I've gotten most of the way through on the um, front panel, so be it. Um, you know, I might have to do some some creative knitting in order to get through to be able to get feedback on all of it but um, yeah. but I mean I'm I'm going pretty fast I think if I knit all tonight I'll get this front done so Excellent. I'm okay with that yeah um mine is kind of again as I mentioned with the interactive knitting um it's kind of making a pattern work for me which I think is kind of similar in the same vein as what you're talking about right um so I did finish up my miss um, I'm not gonna I told myself I'm not gonna turn this into a finished object it, episode it for me anyway it really um <laughs> I'll talk about it in finished objects um but the neckline was really wide um I think I added an additional so you can kind of see where some of the short rows end like here so I added an additional on both sides here and and pre-blocking it was very wide on me, right? So I was like, oh, if this gives a little bit, it's going to end up being a flash dance, like off shoulder thing. Um, so I don't often knit uh, patterns from the, or from the bottom up, starting with the widest part is not my favorite. Like I like uh, toe up socks because you start with a small number of stitches and an increase. And in general, I like raglans or top downs because you smart, start with a small number of stitches and you increase. Um, but with a bottom-up sweater like this one, um, which is the Mist by Leslie Ann Robinson out of her brioche, um, her brioche book uh, that she came and talked to us, uh, you do have the option when you're here of going 
like, oh, I'm going to three needle bind off more stitches because I want the neckline to be skinnier versus like, or, you know, have less width. Um, and uh, rather than kind of getting down here and going like, oh, well, I mean, there's still ways to make it work. Don't get me wrong, right? You can pick up and add additional, um, you know, ribbing or an edging around the, if I had started this from the top down um, or, you know, seam a little bit more um, up kind of after the fact, but, you know, making it work, making it work for you and putting in a neckline where you're going to be um, comfortable wearing it, right? There's nothing worse than wearing something and being so very proud of it, but also being super self-conscious because you're like, oh, this is so wide on my shoulders relative to what I normally do. So, um, and again, not going to do finished object talking about it. <laughs> Had a very similar situation. So apparently I, I am a very wide shouldered person. Um, <laughs> like my, uh, when we did the, um, the, oh, why can't I think of Amy Herzog fit um, class. Like I can set a piece of paper on my shoulder. Like things generally fit me like they do on a hanger. Like I have wide flat shoulders, not sloped shoulders. Um, but apparently I like my necklines to be a little closer, um, and less far out on my shoulders. Um, so I did, I also finished, um, my Rockefeller and I blocked it. Um, prior to blocking it again, I had a very like, so you can see here, this is where it was supposed to end. This was kind of the saddle shoulder that I added up at the top with some short rows. So it was very, very like towards the 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 bump on my shoulder, <laughs> the top of my arm wide um and i just added some short rows um and added a little um consumed these stitches and mm -hmm. added a little um saddle shoulder to it consuming those side stitches um in in motif um and really like it 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 maybe doesn't show off as much of the i cord Mm -hmm. Um, because it's a little closer, right? Like the I cord was supposed to travel from like basically over here to over here. Um, so maybe a little less dramatic with the I cord, but made it work, right? Made it work for me. And I like the way that it looks, um, on me and on peg, um, my dress form. Uh, and then similarly, because this was from the bottom up, um, I was concerned about the bottom flaring. There was only a couple of rows of, um, of garter here. So after I got done, after I knew that I hadn't run out of yarn and after I had done all of my shoulders, whatever, I went back and picked up along the bottom. I don't know if you can be able to see it or not. We can a little bit. So this is where it originally was. And I just added a few more rows of garter to get it to lay down um, because it was was curling um, and that's always an option as well you can pick up stitches and and do add a little bit of garter especially with garter i feel like with ribbing you can do it too it, it can be fairly invisible with ribbing right but with garter i felt like it was super easy right you just pick up as if to knit and then the next do a round of of purling and then um and add to it but I'm not going to turn this into a finished object episode, but making things work, right? Um, kind of going like, this is what the pattern told me to do, but I'm going to say that um, I don't like the way that this is laying or it's too wide on my shoulders. I'm going to add, add, um, ad lib a little bit here, mm -hmm. which sounds like, I mean, you weren't instructed to do what you're doing with your yarn either, right? You're, you're ad libbing. Right, yeah, I mean, I, I am following the pattern, but yeah, I, I just, the way that I use the balls of yarn to try to yep. gauge where I might end up. Mm -hmm. I, I think especially with um, this being a test knit, um, we were told that, that the gauge was a little off or something, and I will have more fabric at the end than mm -hmm. was intended. So now I'm even more concerned with having yeah. enough yarn. Mm -hmm. um, so then I would have been in the past. Like, I'm yeah. like, I think I'm also on a threshold, you know, where you should have bought another ball of yarn, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm the last size that takes three balls kind of thing. You're stretching that yarn as far as you possibly can. Yes, basically. I think I can make the sweater with these, with the yarn I have, and I am going to make that happen. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I I am very close to getting the other uh, item done. So that's another tip, I guess, is that I am laser focused. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to power through and get this one top done fully and then try to get the other one done uh, in the days following this one. So yeah. yeah. Um, the other one, nobody care, or I don't want to say nobody cares. It's not a test knit, right? So there's nobody, there's no expected deadline other than I need to turn it in by the 30th for our points, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's got the more yardage. That's where I'm like, oh, I want to work on the other one. <laughs> it's got more yardage. <laughs> um, but I, I did get all the way down to where all I have to do is the bind off and little sleeves. So I think I can do that in two days. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've definitely played some. So this one I had two. this was written for sport um, and I had two balls of fingering or two skeins of fingering. Um, and I was definitely like there was just a little bit left at the end, um, which was why I waited till the very end to add on the. Um, the additional bottom pieces um, and this took a little bit more yardage as well adding on the, um, the shoulders but I always am eat, trying to eke out as much underarm length as I can um, because I've got um, a longer torso <laughs> yeah which is probably again part of what's driven me to be primarily a top down right because then you can go and tell you've run out of yarn versus like trying to gauge how much yarn you need for the the upper part right so absolutely so i guess yeah. i just want to mention again come to yarn over i am going to have little things on uh to hand out um mm -hmm. if you've been with us a long time you might have seen them before but um they're still fun and uh, you can come by and see me get a notepad tell people how awesome thing how how much fun you have here no, just <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> no, I mean, main, mainly the idea is to um, just feed our presence, right? This is a marketplace. Um, yeah. We want to bring those people down to Rochester in June to shop our marketplace and yeah. our yarn truck rodeo. So um, just making sure the word gets out there and um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's something new. We haven't done it before, and I'm excited to do it and try to drive more. Um, In my mind, I just was, I was just imagining the hair club for men, right? <laughs> Not only am I the president, but I'm also a member. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Ufta. <laughs> Like, did we forget how to say goodbye to? <laughs>